My name is Joe Wilson. I am a co-producer and co-director of a film called Kumuhina, A Place in the Middle. And I'm Dean Hamer, also a co-producer and director of Kumuhina, A Place in the Middle, which is a short film about gender and culture and their intersection in the beautiful islands of Hawaii. It's not, it's like not scary in the sense of them shooting people, but it's scary that everything is being watched and everything is being... And nothing yeah, can really be done publicly. Yeah. You know, it's I all watched all the AYY documentary group. years ago, and that, right. like, it was like yeah. three years ago here, too, and it was, yeah, yeah. it's shocking. Yeah. He's directing a film right now from China here in, in Berlin. Berlin. He's oh, giving yeah, instructions really? online, yeah, and yeah. shoot it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's how they do it, yeah. It's kind of, it's crazy. Yeah. But can you imagine like if Wieland got approached by the police in Germany and told, if you do this, you're going to jail? Don't show any gay This happened Don't 70 years gaves. ago here. And yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, like we're, we're done. I mean, I hope it looks bad right now. There's a lot of like right wing weird stuff going on yeah. in Germany. Yeah, too. very yeah. interesting. Yeah. In Germany and um, yeah. in France. I mean, Europe is fucked <laughs> also. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. yeah I'm really sure you is. might encounter some of these yeah, bizarre it's things crazy. too. It's, uh, Actually, the moderator of our film screening yesterday. Who was it? I don't remember her name, unfortunately. Not probably because it's generation. Generation. It was a generation. Yeah. Probably would not. Yeah, but yeah. she came up to us after the film. She's a woman of color in the U.S. What we would say, oh, yeah, you're a woman of color. Yeah. And she said she really identified with the young girl's experience in the film yeah. because of what it feels like to be a person of color in Germany now, because it's of the, every Monday night, crazy. apparently, there's people marching and... It's really intense at the moment. I mean, I grew up here, so I have a... I'm, like, sensitive to it, but I, I, I'd rather, like, live in the States right now. I really want to go back. Yeah. In New York, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> not, like... Sort of this. We watched the... Did you see that Danish film? See, this, this guy went to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and filmed in the only LGBT mm -hmm. center. That's on our list, to oh, see. Yeah. The three stories. Is it's, it good? It's, an, yeah. it's, it's really... It's, like, a typical, like... LGBT documentary in a way, but right. just the stories are so, and I felt so, it's like 2015 and these kids are struggling oh. so hard against that, like, ultra-conservative, yeah. crazy insane. Uh, our, what our first, first film, was, film about. was about, because <laughs> when we got married 10 years ago, okay. Where did you get married? In, in, um, in Canada, because Canada. it wasn't legal any place in the States then, and I put the announcement in the New York Times, which is my home paper, and everyone was like, oh, that's so nice. And he put it in his home, hometown, which is Oil City, Pennsylvania, which is small and ultra conservative. Oil City already is. And the, the home <laughs> of the American Family the Association. Yeah. <laughs> ultra <laughs> huge. So it turned big. into a big controversy. Yeah. Out of well, which. Did your fam is your family still there? Or? Parts of my family were still there, but the interesting thing about this was the, the mere announcement in the paper created a huge firestorm of controversy in the paper. Yeah. And as a result, we were living in Washington, D.C. We got a letter in the mail one day, 300 miles away from a woman who said, I saw your announcement in the paper. I don't know any gay people in this town, but my son is gay and has been tortured for the last year at his high school. Can you help? So we were like, holy shit. We weren't really documentary yeah. filmmakers at the time, but we went you you were to meet DC. them. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're doing other kinds of human rights work. So we went and met them with a camera and they were just desperate to tell their story. So that started a whole journey of a what became a film. Yeah. yeah. About this one protagonist? Or? Well, about really, they were one of the, the main stories in the film, but it was really how do you create change in small town conservative America? And then. Yeah. And it's so, yeah. yeah it's but, an important topic still. Yeah, and we, still, just, we wanted to yeah. use that in rural areas, so we decided to go to every county in Pennsylvania, all 64. There, there are places in Pennsylvania, like 10,000 people in a county, that have never, ever ever had an openly LGBT event of any sort or any only so openly gay person any contact or like no. right. exchange yeah. no. or so we just set up something in a library and it's there's big swatches of America that are like that it's I know this country still fascinates me so much yeah. <laughs> you have like these amazingly progressive histories of you know those cities and this but then you just two hours outside yeah, yeah, like, like yeah. middle age. It's People amazing. think writ large there's progress being made, but the day-to-day -day in most places is still it's a big tough. struggle. Yeah. 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 But it fascinates me, really. It's yeah. a fascinating country. Which is why we were so happy to end up in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. exactly. it's, exactly. it's a different, opposite. it's kind of a different cultural narrative there, which yeah. we well, think we, is we, Yeah, place. your film, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it now because I'm really curious, but I, uh, it sounds like you died, like we're diving into that cultural. Yeah, yeah. Richness, it's really rich. Huh? It's so very rich it's really and rich. largely not unknown to people, but it has a great history and just a different approach toward first people. I just yeah. take it away, ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, right. Right. That's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Let's start off <laughs> officially now, because sometimes it takes a little bit. Um, okay, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Right, perfect. Welcome to the Berlinale and to the Teddy Awards, of course, too. You brought a short film to the Generation section. Um, maybe you can talk about, you both are based in Hawaii. Yes. Oh. And oh. I would guess that because you live there now, you came across that story you were um, telling us in that film. Yeah. Maybe you can begin with talking a little bit about how you came across that story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we met this amazing teacher and cultural icon named Hinale Moana Wong Kalu. She's usually called Kumu Hina, which just means uh, teacher Hina. And we were filming her at her school. And Hina was trying to teach a bunch of young boys a very masculine hula, very sort of manly type of thing. And they just weren't getting it. Um, and so Hina began to bring out her own masculine side, which she's able to do because Hina was born as a boy herself, even though she's now a woman, something in Hawaii called Mahu. Uh, but they still weren't getting it. And one day, this little 11-year-old girl walks by and says, let me take a try at that. And everyone's like, no, this is only for boys. She says, just let me try. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it turns out that she has a lot of man spirit or mana inside of her. Mm -hmm. And her teacher, Kumu Hina, is able to bring that out. Mm -hmm. And she begins to interact with the boys and slowly but surely become the leader. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just an amazing story because a lot of places in the U.S., she might have been looked down at or castigated or mm -hmm. set aside. But um, in Hawaii, she's actually very much looked up to. So mm -hmm. that's the story we're telling. Mm -hmm. And when did you decide to make that short documentary um, it. You know, it's interesting as Dean described the the we do have a longer feature film called Kumuhina. Mm -hmm. And this story that we we have here at the Berlinale um, is called Kumuhina a place in the middle. So it's kind of like a smaller story within the larger film and we thought it was important to make it into a short because in the world in which we live today whether we're here in Germany or somewhere in the US or elsewhere mm -hmm. You know, the lives of particularly young people um, who aren't uh, somewhere within what we would call the normal range of, are you a boy, are you a girl, mm -hmm. or what are you? Everybody thinks you have to have a label. And this Hawaiian story really shows yeah. that you can be who you are within this spectrum of gender, cultural, or other kinds of fluidity and have a real home. So we thought a short version of this film, mm -hmm. particularly told from a young person's point of view, would be a really important film to be available for kids and for educators mm -hmm. and other people just trying to create, you know, environments where everybody's welcome. So we're here in um, the Generation K Plus section as well as, you know, the Teddy section mm -hmm. and the queer section. It's just a wonderful convergence of themes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but I understand that one of the reasons why your protagonist can kind of like live that really beautiful identity is because there's a cultural legacy to, True enough. to it. Yeah. 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 So in Hawaii there's a tradition called Mahu. Mm -hmm. And Mahu are people who have both male spirit mm -hmm. and female spirit. Mm -hmm. And these people are looked at as special and even sacred because they have both strengths within them. Mm -hmm. So typically Mahu are the people who carry on the culture they remember the long genealogical chants that are required to mm -hmm. recall Hawaiian history. Um, they often are caretakers of people. And in fact, the first Mahu mm -hmm. were supposed to be from Tahiti, and they came over the long distance in a canoe, and they were said to be very tall, statuesque mm -hmm. men-type people, mm -hmm. but with female mannerisms mm -hmm. and gentleness. Mm -hmm. And they brought the healing arts to Hawaii and are mm -hmm. now commemorated there. Mm -hmm. So there's this cultural legacy of not just of like accepting Mahu even though they're transgender, mm -hmm. but of venerating Mahu because they mix both genders. Mm -hmm. And it's within that cultural background that this type yeah. of fluidity is so yeah. possible. And it's, it's a real clash of cultures too because Hawaii, like so many other places where there were indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. um, are dominated now by kind of the Western way of doing things. So while in the West we talk about people who might be transgender, you know, transitioning from one gender to another. In Hawaii and, and man, many parts of the Pacific, there is a way to be who you are between and within. Is and it not, close to, to, to the uh, two-spirit? It's a similar yes. concept yes. to two-spirit. I'd yeah. say it's quite close to yeah, two-spirit yeah. in yeah. that it's not 
you change from one to the other. It's mm -hmm. like you're born yeah. as a two-spirit person. Right. And, and highly yeah. regarded because so, of that. Yeah. You inhabit, you know, a spiritual place. Yeah. Yeah. Is so. there some sort of like initiation or how do you no, grow that's what's into funny that? About it. I think, you know, we're always, if you look at it through Western eyes, we see it as the, like this, ah, you know, how do you recognize this? But if you see it like in just this cultural context of a school that's Hawaiian values based, it's just part of what it means, you know, to be in the spectrum there. And Hina, the teacher, because her kids do live in kind of a Western world outside of the school, she does try to create, like, a lift those kids up because she knows that if they're treated really special in that environment, mm -hmm. they'll be able to withstand the harshness of the kind of modern Western world outside of them. So she does elevate that status and say, you're special mm -hmm. because of who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you, it's not been screened in Berlin yet, or has it, did you already? We just had our world premiere yesterday, and it was part of the Generation K Plus section. So there were kids as young as four or five, a lot of them, and their parents, and um, the kids really appreciate it. The kids, How did they react? Oh, they loved, this little girl is the magic hula girl. She's incredible. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit like the film The Whale Rider, where there's this yes. strong girl that takes yeah. over. And um, we also just played it in Tahiti. And in Tahiti, they have a film festival where the first day is all school kids only. And they played the documentary. We were like, well, how's that going to yeah. work? The kids there, there were like the most. 700 students. 700 students. students. They're yeah. the most reactive audience we've ever seen. They're cheering in the middle. You know, every time this little girl would stand up and belt it out. They're like, yeah, get up, Tina. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people wow. identify with her. So why, why did you make that film? Why is it relevant? Why do you want to show it to the world? You know, partly it's because there are a lot of kids like Ho'onani who mm -hmm. are somewhere in between and mm -hmm. to empower them. Mm -hmm. But more important to let other teachers know, teachers who aren't transgender, <laughs> teachers who live in other cultures, uh, and their parents and their community members know that this is fine to be in between genders. It's not just fine, it's not just okay, it actually can come with its own benefits, and that kids like that really should be encouraged. And we think it can make a much more open and inclusive and welcoming society for everybody who's a little bit different. So that's our real motivation for the film. Yeah. We're activists at heart. Filmmakers, yes, but film as a tool. As a tool, okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you stand for? What do you um, What's your activism? Well, I think you know we try to find stories that uh, help uncover injustice. You know, an injustice that is often not acknowledged or kind of treated in a superficial way. So even screening here at the Berlinale, while this is a film that many people say, oh, it's about gender and how young people are kind of exploring that, people are coming up to us and saying, at this moment in Germany, where race and ethnicity are being challenged yet again, um, that a story like this gives even adults hope about what it means to kind of be accepted in what may seem like a harsh environment. So I think we have to look at what does it mean to um, identify as your own culture um, and live that um, proudly wherever you happen to be and have the right to do that and to be respected and included in all ways in the community that you want to call home. That's what the film is for. So although it is a, a specific local story, it has like this universal relevance to it. You know, yeah. we like yeah. all activists and all right-thinking people believe everyone should have an equal chance, everyone yeah. should be equal. Yeah. But we think that it's not just a matter of protecting the people that are on the outside and telling your stories. Mm -hmm. It's also good for the majority of people, for the yeah. controlling people yeah. to know these stories. Because right. after all, they're the problem. It's not the gay people that are the problem, it's the straight people. Yeah, it's yeah. not the Well, there's also gay people, people in control that are a problem. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> You're absolutely right that's about true. that. It's not uh, that the gays true. are the... Well, no, yeah. we, <laughs> when we talk about these ones. kinds of things, like, you know, when you do a film screening and people say, well, what can we do? And often in the so-called queer LGBT world, the idea is, oh, you have to come out and you have to stand up and tell your yeah. stories. Yeah. And in a way, I do believe that's true, but in a way, it's the people who are experiencing kind of the, the ones being marginalized also shouldn't be the ones who have to shoulder the burden of correcting right. the social problems. It's like the so-called mainstream world has to stand yeah. up and take responsibility at some point. Yeah. Yeah. We think a film yeah. like this has the, a possibility to engage people like in a more hopeful and entertaining way to achieve that, as opposed to telling sad stories. Mm. We wanted to tell a positive story that 
kind of maybe gets that same point across. Yeah. I think you achieved it. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I have, I'm, I have to. Too. I'll watch it. I'll watch the entire cool. film. Good. Thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, we appreciate it.